Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about nested if-else statements in Java. Here's our outline. We will see what are nested if-else statements, and after that, we will talk about if-else ladder in Java. So what are the nested if-else statements? Simply, this is using if-else statements inside if-else statements. So I want you to implement this logic. Suppose that we have a number n. If n is greater than 10, then I want you to print greater than 10. Else if n is equal to 10, I want you to print equal 10. And finally, if this condition is not true, and also this over here is not true, I want you to print less than 10, right? So pause the video and they try to implement this logic in Java. Implementation means writing some code, right? So you have to write some code that represents this logic in Java. So let's go to IntelliJ. So this is the logic that we want to implement. Let's start by creating the variable n. I'm going to suppose that it is an integer, it is called n, and it is equal to 10, for example, all right? The value doesn't matter at this point. Now let's start by implementing this logic. First of all, let's test if n is greater than 10, and we're going to print greater than 10, all right? So over here, I'm going to say, if n is greater than 10, then I want to print greater than 10, all right? So this is the first part. Now, we are saying else if n is equal to 10. As you can see, we are using the else over here. This means that if this is false, we are going to check for another condition, right? Which is if n is equal to 10. So let's do that. Over here, I'm going to use the else statement and inside it, I'm going to test for another condition. So inside the if statement, I'm going to say if n is equal to 10, then I'm going to print equals 10 like this, right? Now what's happening exactly over here? As you can see, we didn't put braces for the else statement, right? So we can only put one statement inside it. And in this case, this statement is the if statement. So this if statement is inside the else statement, and this statement over here is inside the if statement. You might think that this statement is inside the else statement, but it is not. It is inside the if. So we don't need to put braces for the else statement, all right? So let me say this again. This statement is inside the if statement, and the if statement is inside this else statement, and this else statement belongs to this if statement, and this statement belongs to this if statement, all right? Now let's continue. Now we are saying else as out less than 10. So we are using an else over here. This means that if this condition is false, and if this condition is false, we want to print less than 10. So let's think about it. If this condition is false, then this else statement will be executed, right? Now, if this condition is also false, then what will be executed? Nothing, right? So we want to create an else statement for this if statement. So let's do that. Over here, I'm going to create an else statement, and inside it, I'm going to print less than 10. Now pay attention. This else statement belongs to this if statement. Always the else belongs to the first if above it. So this else is for this if, and this else is for this if. And as you can see, we want this to be executed if and only if all these conditions are false. And our code over here is correct. Because suppose that this is false, then we will execute this else statement. So we will test for this condition. Now suppose that this is false, so we'll execute this else statement and we will print less than 10. Alright? So as you can see, this code looks ugly. There is another way to write this code. And this is the else if ladder. So to do that, we will put this if statement near the else statement like this. And this else statement will be written standalone on a line, like this. Now let me fix the indentation, and we'll end with something like this. So first of all, we are testing for a condition, right? If this condition is false, we will test for another condition. So we are saying else if. And if this condition is also false, then we will execute the final else statement over here. And of course, if this condition is true, we will not check this condition over here, because the else statement will not be executed, right? So only one if statement will be executed. And it is the if statement with the condition that evaluates to true. And I want you to remember that this else statement belongs to this if and this else statement belongs to this if. Now let me ask you this. What if I remove this else statement? What's the difference between this code and this code? Pause the video and think about it. So suppose that this condition is true, all right? This means that this statement will be executed. And after that, we will continue executing these statements. So we are going to check for this condition, right? We will see if this condition is true or not. But as you know, if n is greater than 10, if this is true, this means that n is not equal to 10. So if we are checking for this condition, we are wasting time. 
But when we use else if statements, if this is true, we will not check for this condition. Because this else will only be executed if the condition over here is false. So if this is true, this statement will be executed and that's it. All this code over here will not be executed. So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.